Let's get some clarity there from what happened today and the implication of all of this. I told you earlier, there are a series of meetings we understand that are going on as we speak uh, in the People's Democratic Party. One uh, also we include uh, the deliberation on the formation of the Atiku um, Okoa Presidential Campaign Council for the People's Democratic Party ahead of the 2023 elections. Let's uh, dig deeper into these reconciliation efforts in the People's Democratic Party. I'm being joined by a former national chairman of the PDP, uh, Mr. Haliru Bello Mohammed. He joins us uh, uh, in Abuja. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Let me get your view on uh, what has become, um, what do you call it, progress now? or the events that unfolded today from Port Harcourt. What's your view on the ongoings in your party? Well, I have never had any doubt that PDP would be able to resolve this crisis amicably in-house. Because this is not the first time we are going into a major crisis. We have gone through several since 1999, and PDP had the expertise, and we also have the people with the experience to come in and solve these crises. We have done it before. So what is happening in Port Harcourt today is uh, inspiring in the sense that Governor Fintry has just spoken that they have made progress, and I have no doubt they are going to come up with a solution that will uh, satisfy all concerned in this crisis. And we are going to go into the coming election as a strong party, united, and by the grace of God, we are going to win the election. Now, before I come to so, the optimism about winning the I election, will because ask the members as, of um, our party, a very experienced uh, party administrator, uh, you, you must have uh, your reasons for thinking that your party will win the election. Uh, in fact, at so early at this stage, now, let me go into a question that I've asked and what has been bothering the minds of a lot of people, thinking that the party, your party, PDP established before 1999, one election in 1999, has experienced myriads of crises. What makes this very crisis, this very problem, a very yes. difficult one to resolve? Why is it so special a problem? Why is it a naughty one? Why is it a difficult problem to resolve? Well, uh, nomination problems are always significant in, at any election. We have always come through them. But this particular one, because of the importance of Governor Wiki in our party, we remember he stood by the party when we were in deep crisis during the Ali Madi Sharif, Sharif uh, problem. And he has also been a pillar supporting the party since then. Uh, in fact, the rebuilding of the party was uh, thanks to him and other governors of the party since we lost the election in uh, 2015. But all the same, uh, the issue of nomination and especially nomination of the uh, running mate this time became problematic. Not because Achiku Abubakar has set up a committee. That was correct because last time in 2019, when the vice president was nominated without consultation, there was a lot of uh, complaints and brouhaha. So this time around, uh, the Wazir of Adama corrected that mistake and consulted widely uh, among party members before nominating uh, his running mate. But the problem is, uh, as always, for any appointment or nomination, there are several contenders. And I believe the way it was handled uh, 
before announcement was the cause of the problem, Wiki had the right to feel slighted because he was expecting to be nominated and when the decision was made, uh, he was not uh, private to it before the announcement. I think that was the mistake that was made. But that is a minor issue. Wiki is a loyal party man. As I said earlier, he had been a supportive of the party and I believe he would like PDP to win the presidential election and after he is consulted and assuaged, I'm sure he will support the candidature of Atiku Abubakar and work hard to make sure PDP wins the presidential election. I'm sure everything will be sorted out after this Port Harcourt meeting. Let me, since you have a medical background as a, as a medical doctor, um, you, you probably, can you hear me now? Uh, vet, vet, veterinary surgeon. Yeah, veterinary. Yeah, veterinary. Yeah, so you Hello? have, uh, uh, yeah, you have uh, experience in uh, medicine. So uh, let me use uh, medical language, perhaps, into these political logjam that your party has found itself. Uh, you've identified some of the problems surgically. If you were to address this problem, how would you isolate what has become a malignant disease uh, in the People's Democratic Party that is coming almost every election cycle. And I'll, I'll draw your mind to what happened in 2015. Similar problems were, were, came up in the party. Some governors were not happy. And perhaps one of the reasons some governors have told me on several interviews that, that those problems were not resolved. And going into the election, that was why your party got a bloody nose. If you were in the position uh, to remove uh, the malignant disease and surgically operate it to get your party back on track ahead of 2023 election. What would you do differently this time? I, I, first of all, I, I don't agree with you that uh, we have a malignant disease in PDP. We have a what I consider a slight problem uh, a member of our party and a number of his supporters felt slighted in the process of nominating a vice presidential candidate. I, with the expertise and experience of PDP in problem solving, I don't think that is enough problem to be called uh, malignant. We are working on it. It is a difficult subject to discuss at this point because is something that is ongoing. We have a committee working in Port Harcourt, and one would not like to throw a hammer in the works. So I wouldn't want to go into much detail of what is happening or what can happen. But if I were to solve the problem, it will not even reach this uh, state. I think there has been some uh, I wouldn't say failure of leadership, but there has been some mistakes on, in the, on the side of the Board of Trustees. You know, Board of Trustees has a responsibility of moving in to resolve issues between party members or between party and legislature or between party or legislature and the presidency when we are in government. But uh, this time, because we don't have a president, the Board of Trustees did not act as fast as it should. If Board of Trustees has stepped in and strongly called the parties to order, uh, this uh, problem will not reach the stage it has reached. But even then, it is not too late. Uh, the party has set up a process in motion and we are working on the problem, and I believe after this Port Harcourt meeting, there will no longer be any problem. Wiki will come back and join his brothers and sisters in the leadership of the party, and we will move ahead to win the election in 2023.
So t t tell me, um, what, your, what do you think that, uh, for example, uh, because you, you were talking about the fact that uh, that relationship was not properly managed uh, after the primaries and all of that, uh, where was the misstep on the part of the presidential candidate? Is there any? Well, it must be said that the right to nominate a presidential animate is the right of the candidate. And he has exercised it judiciously. And majority of the party is happy with the choice. So there is no mistake in that. Like I said, the mistake was on the part of the Board of Trustees, because when the announcement was made uh, and Wiki was not properly consulted and assuaged to understand why he was not picked as against uh, Governor Okoa, the Board of Trustees is the one that should have moved in to assuage him and to bring him on the same uh, wavelength with the nominee of the party. But that was not done immediately, and Wike felt uh, slighted and neglected and felt unappreciated. I think that is what caused the whole problem. But now that steps have been taken to reach out to him, and he has agreed to meet with a team that had been set up by the presidential nominee, the Wazir of Adama, I think the very fact of agreeing to meet is an indication that he is ready for a reconciliation. And as soon as that is achieved, uh, he will join the campaign and he will play a prominent role in the campaign, as all of us will do. And uh, the party will be victorious by the grace of God. Let me uh, perhaps a final question on this issue of the rift and uh, before I go into your optimism about the 2023 election and the performance of your party. Uh, my question will be, um, uh, there are those who are uh, saying uh, that one of the demands from the weakest team was that the national chairman, Yocha Ayu, should step down based on some of the commitment that was made that should there be an, uh, a party a candidate, a presidential candidate from the North, he would, uh, if the party wants him to step aside, he would, as a Democrat, do so. If you put yourself, or if you were in a position to negotiate and reconcile this situation, and if this is thrown up, would you say that Senator Yocha Ayu should step aside for the sake of peace? Well, Senator Ayu has made that statement, and he was right. Uh, the culture of PDP and the provisions of our constitution, including the provision of the Nigerian constitution, uh, makes it mandatory that whatever is being done or being planned should be done to reflect the diversity of Nigeria. And that is what the Nigerian constitution provides. That's what the PDP constitution provides. And that has been the culture in PDP. So if there is a president from the north, it is right that the chairman uh, should come from the south. But we have also got to look at the problem of sending away the chairman at this stage, just a few months to uh, election. The aim of the party is to win election. So if we find that sending out the chairman will upset the apple cart and make, make our preparations for the 2023 election, I can see the point of those who are saying the chairman should not be changed now. On the other hand, uh, I have a personal experience that when uh, Chief Umwodo, who was our chairman then, uh, had problem and he had to step down from being chairman during 
our convention of 2011, I stepped in as the chairman and I was not removed for a substantive national chairman until after the election because the party felt it would be disruptive for a chairman to be dropped just a few months to election. So you can see it has happened before, but now we are in a peculiar situation where we have to assess how will removal of the chairman affect our preparation for the 2023 election. And I believe the relevant organs of the party are looking at it and giving it consideration. But uh, I himself has agreed that if there is a president from the north, the chairman should come from the south. But the issue now is the timing. So it is for the party organs to meet and decide what is the best time and what is the best option for the party, uh, seeing that we are only a few months from the general election. All right, uh, let's uh, anchor on the reason why you are optimistic that your party would win 2023 presidential election. What gives you that optimism? I know in politics, a week is a long time, but uh, there are several reasons why every right-thinking person will believe that PDP will win the 2023 election. One item alone is enough to get to that conclusion. The way the APC has messed up the nation, they have messed up the economy, they have messed up the security, they have messed up the livelihood of the people, and that in itself will make the people of Nigeria feel that it is, God forbid, to return to APC government. But apart from that, there are many other things, like the performance of PDP uh, from 1999 to 2015. Everybody, every right thinking politician or, and voter will know that there is a marked difference between the situation of the nation in the economy and in the security, in the sector of education compared to the seven years of APC. Even that enough will make any right-thinking person feel that uh, nobody would like to go back to APC rule. As you can see, the educational uh, sector in yeah. Nigeria so, is in a turmoil. Uh, we have never had it so bad. I mean, there, there are and who, and um, if you want to feel, to, uh, to, just, to just a minute, please. Time, if I'm you want to feel, uh, very point, which is very just, 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 a minute, just a minute, please. Just a minute, just a few, a few seconds. The party and the APC, if you want, if you want to check, check your your, your pocketbook. Mm. Pardon? All right. So let me throw the question. You didn't listen to me. So there are those who I mean, but, uh, have the opinion. That yeah, your party you and the APC are somewhat like a CME strain. Some will say they are, in fact, six and a half a dozen. That doesn't really uh, make a lot of difference. Some opposition will describe the two parties as such. In fact, the APC will blame your party that some of the rot they met on the ground was as a result of what was done when your party was in power when they took over, for example the arms deal and the monies from the NSA office, the accusation which, in fact, some of the accusation went, fingers were pointed at yourself, the fact that the reason why security deteriorated to this point, these are some of the issues. And you think that Nigerians would vote for your party considering this background? But you know that uh, APC and PDP are far apart. PDP from 1999 to uh, 2015 has performed creatively because uh, the Boko Haram started during Aradwa's time. But within a short time, it was quenched. 
and there was peace. Uh, and it was contained within a few local governments in the northeast uh, zone of Nigeria. It is the coming of APC that created a situation where uh, not only the Boko Haram spread, but other security uh, challenges due to bandits uh, and other rebellious uh, groups spread not only to northwest but to north central. And as at present, every right thinking person knows that there is no state no local government in Nigeria that you can say is safe. So you cannot say this a uh, Cotton, strategy. The, I apologies, sir. The, for those who will say that uh, the monies they were meant to fight Boko Haram and purchase arms to for military to fight were, went into private pockets. And these are some of the reasons why things deteriorate. I mean, do you have answer to why that happened and the accusation that was been leveled against some of you who were in the PDP when APC got into power at the time. No, uh, when APC got into power, uh, I was going to tell you, we handed over an economy that is number one in Africa. And we didn't hand over insecurity outside the uh, Northeast. In fact, before uh, President Jonathan handed over, all the local governments that were taken by the Boko Haram in the Northeast were recovered. There was not a single local government that was under the control of uh, Boko Haram. But when Buhari came, it's common knowledge that uh, some of the technical assistants that were invited by President Jonathan to assist the Nigerian army were frustrated and sent out of the country. And I'm sure even the APC government regretted that action of uh, President Muhammad Buhari um, of sending out sir, we, the technical totally assistant tonight. that was well, invited to, thank you for, for, your for, thoughts. For, to the army. We need to close because we are approaching the top of the hour. Yeah, apologies, sorry. We are totally out of time. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight and your thoughts that you've shared with us.